The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. What a load of crap. Well experienced man in, uh, in Parliament. I'd, I would caution him to avoid using uh, language like that that could cause disruption. And Shut the up. The f up. The Honourable Member uh, from, uh, from the top, uh, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. His carbon tax deal does not distract from the fact that he announced $400 million in surface-to-AR equipment that he has still not delivered. Right. What he did right. deliver is detonators to Putin so that Putin could put them in landmines and blow up Ukrainians. He delivered a turbine that was refurbished in Montreal so that Putin could put it in his pipelines and pump gas and make money off Europe that we should be bringing home to this country. Why is it that he always stands up for the dirty dictators like Putin instead of the paychecks for our people? There you go. Once again, I would caution all members uh, to be very careful about how they <laughs> impugn motivations to other Shut members. Shut up, up up speakers. Members. And this is, was the subject of a declaration which the chair had made back in October, and I encourage all members to please refer to it again uh, to making sure that we keep on the right side of parliamentary language. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, when the Leader of the Opposition refers to Ukraine as some faraway foreign land, when he continues to insist that all of his MPs, including Ukrainian-Canadian MPs, vote against a free trade agreement that Volodymyr Zelensky is asking us to vote for to support Ukraine, he can't hide behind the kind of misinformation and disinformation that he regularly peddles in. It's very simple, Mr. Speaker. Will the members of the, the Conservative So I am going to remind I'm going to remind all members again. I know it's Wednesday. And I know it's Wednesday, my dudes. I know that all members, but as I had just You look like the least in intimidating person ever. As to the same degree that I just made a, a statement to the, uh, to, to a member. He's got um, again. lines above his eyebrows for how much he frowns. You could, <laughs> you could see it right there. <laughs> I would invite all members to please listen to their whips for a second, and I will get, Can you have to sit down when you're up? Thank you. You got to run I'm glad he didn't mute the mic this time. I invite all members, please, to be very careful about impugning mes uh, uh, motivations or associating members with uh, governments that we do find uh, in this House uh, to be disreputable, if not odious. So I'm just looking for all of us to make sure that we stay on the right, so that we all uh, wait and do our turn. And I will ask the Honourable Member from South Shore St. Margaret's to please uh, come and speak to me at the chair and we'll have an opportunity to discuss this. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, he could not point to a single thing that I said that was untrue because it is all factual. It is yep. a fact that we already have a, an excellent trade agreement with Ukraine, that it does not include a carbon tax, and that there is no need for a carbon tax to be in any free trade agreement. In fact, there never has been a need for a carbon tax in any other free trade agreement in the history. But while he remembered a carbon tax, he, for, he forgot to include in the deal a ban on him sending detonators and, turbi and turbines over to Putin. Why is it that he's so determined to allow Putin to acquire weapons and money rather than having a real free trade deal with Ukraine? Wham, bam. Thank you, Sam. The right, the right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the leader of the official opposition has an opportunity to correct the record from him having called Ukraine a faraway foreign land by allowing his Ukrainian MP, Ukrainian-Canadian MPs, at the very least, 
to vote in favour of the renewal of the Canada-Ukraine Free Trade Agreement coming up uh, for a vote in the coming days. It is an opportunity for those who choose to stand with Ukraine to stand with Ukraine in this House and be counted. Why is he muzzling his Ukrainian Canadian MPs? That's going to backfire in about five seconds. Mr. Speaker, we are 100 percent united in our support of Ukraine and in our opposition to the carbon tax. This is what he does. He divides. He wants to distract from the yep. fact that he doubled housing costs, caused 30 homeless encampments in Halifax, caused shootings to go up by 100 percent, drug overdoses up by 300 percent. It is no wonder that he would want to use fear and falsehoods to distract from his many failures, and that is exactly what he is doing. Why won't he finally unite this country instead of trying to divide and conquer? Let's go, everybody! The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, this House used to be united in its support of Ukraine and its support of Volodymyr Zelensky. And yet now we see... Everyone, please ask the Prime Minister to start up again. And I ask all members, please, to listen to the response without interruption so that we can have an orderly House. Prime Minister from the, from the top. Mr. Speaker, this House used to be united in its unequivocal support for Ukraine. And then the Leader of the Opposition disparagingly referred to Ukraine as a faraway foreign land, something for which he has not yet apologized, uh, and has demanded that all his MPs, including Prairie MPs who have strong Ukrainian-Canadian populations, vote against a free trade deal that Volodymyr Zelensky has deliberately and directly asked Canadians to support. When will he stand up for Ukraine? 